garage. It gets its power from these two solar trackers. Both of these trackers were built just out of two by six and a little bit of strapping, one by four strapping that's used to anchor your jip rock to your ceiling. These two trackers are manual trackers and they supply the power to this off-grid garage in Pictou County, Nova Scotia. They simply clip in and clip out in order to flip them. Pull the two hooks, one on each side. And then just take the tracker, grab a hold of it, flip it down, pin it back out on these two hooks that I have shown here, and voila, you now have a tracker. The other one is of the same build, design. And in total, this one as well has to be flipped over. In total, they have both 360 watts of solar power. Now, we shall flip the other one. Again, these are manual trackers. They have to be manually switched. These are pointing in the direction of west, as of now. And have to be pointing east. In order to get the sun for the morning. These were left in yesterday's settings. It is 8 o'clock in the morning, Thursday morning. And now we have two solar trackers flipped in the eastern direction, which will supply somewhat of a maximum capability of 24 watts, 24 amps rather on a hot sunny day. This time of year it's pushing into middle of October. I'm picking up somewhere around 18 amps off these two manual trackers off of the 360 watt solar array. They feed underground wires to this garage which is an off-grid garage and it is 20 by 20. We just temporarily hooked a well in dug it under so nobody could get at it or no little kids could play with it. It's a 100 foot 6 inch borehole well that goes into this tank here and it turns the water temporarily off and on to feed the camper a water supply. This is the generator. It's only a small 1500 watt generator with this rain cap on it and the little generator simply feeds a charge controller when the batteries are down, I have to charge them if I don't get enough sun. The 20 by 20 garage. Again is off grid. And it has lights and plugs fed off of that small solar array through a battery bank into an inverter. And in the garage we also have satellite television as you can see on the top and offset in front of that is high-speed internet. We know we are rednecks when we have high-speed internet and satellite TV and no electrical power. Here's the camper. The camper is fed by the off-grid power supply. It simply plugs into the outside of this garage through a 30 amp breaker into this extension cord goes under and feeds the camper all the adequate power needs that are required again inside <coughs> excuse me inside the camper we have satellite TV as well as high speed internet and this is through ExploreNet uh, the hose from the water comes around the back of the garage and it goes into the camper through this hose and the well pump powers it. The camper has hot water through a propane hot water tank and it has 
a propane furnace for heat forced hot air. So we have all the luxuries of life here including TV, high speed internet and again no power poles as you can see there are no poles roadside however they are coming and in the near future uh, here is the next development going on which is a 26 by 40 home and it is going to be powered by wind turbines on a grid back system which is going to be buy from the electrical company when I'm low and sell to the electrical company when I'm high. We'll get back to the 12 volt off grid garage which is powered by an inverter that's inside. The inverter is placed here and is just simply a small 12 volt inverter and the 12 volt inverter is just an El Cheapo that is 3000 watts modified sine wave 6000 watt surge power for 9 seconds and regulates back down to 3000 watts of modified sine wave power again and the two extension cords jump her out and go into the bottom of this fuse panel and the fuse panel of course has breakers which feed the outside plug to the camper the inside plugs in here as well as the lighting that you can see overhead here so we have power and lights in the garage power and lights in the camper it feeds everything in the camper right down from the well pump to the fan for the hot water or for the hot air and the all other required areas such as a 24 inch fridge full time and a washer spin dryer as well as in there which we use a clothesline so we have uh, we also use it for the TV and the high speed internet here which you see going on which is a modem to your right and a router to your left for wireless connections there's the laptop Inside here we have a charge controller on top which is connected to the generator and it'll send 40 amps into this battery bank when it's low through a 12 volt battery bank. There's 24 of these batteries, 8 on top and 16 inside this shell here. These batteries came from the wrecker or the recycler in my local area. They were purchased for a very low price. Uh, they're 7 years old they're an AGM battery which is a, a sealed battery they're a 70 amp hour battery now when the sun's shining this TriStar 60 will feed somewhere around upwards of 20 amps of power into the battery bank uh, this is just a tease on this TS60 it'll handle a lot more than what is going through it but it is uh, very good charge controller but again it's just teasing it the breaker panel to the left of the charge controller is coming in from the solar array and it just turns off the breaks the power between the solar array and the charge controller the charge controller goes through the battery bank in turn charging the batteries and if I don't have enough I run the generator and this eliminator 40 amp 12 volt charger. So this is my off-grid garage. You've seen everything. If you have any questions you can contact me through an email address. Please title it off-grid garage so I don't discard your email as spam. And you can ask me any questions further from whatever you may wish involving uh, the 12 volt off-grid garage and you can send it to regbrightman at hotmail.com all lowercase if there are any more questions on anything involved with this don't hesitate to contact me